Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Chain. Thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video, which is a Patreon soap design challenge. If you don't know what one of those is, every month I ask my patrons to list a suggestion based on a theme um, for me to incorporate into a soap. For this month, I asked them to name either a topper or an embed to put into a soap. And I put all the suggestions into my soapy jug and the one they drew out came from Michelle. Now, Michelle doesn't have her own business as of yet. She is in the processes of getting it started. So once it's all up and running, I'll leave details of her business down in the description box. But what Michelle wanted to see me incorporate into a soap was a fish in bed. So I got out my little fishy extruder tools and I got to making. Let's go and see how I make Lily Pond using some fishing beds. Let's go. All right, so we've got the trusty box of soap dough here, plus a few tools so we can start making some of the embeds. I will be piping the leaves into the bottom of this soap, just because it's going to be easier to get that sort of look. And then to do my fish in on the inside, I have the iDream in soap extruder discs here. I think I'm only going to use the one shape fish, the one that's closest to a, um, a goldfish, because that's you're probably going to see goldfish in a pond rather than angelfish. So I'm going to use that one. I also have this little disc here, which I have had from off Wickedly Goods. And that one is a koi fish. And I've got a little adapter plate so I can pop that one through my big boy extruder. So let's get on to making these. We will start with doing the fish. So I kind of want them to be goldfish looking. Now I could just pick out the orange soap dough, but I'm going to blend some. So I'm going to get this sherbet one. That's actually got a bit of brown in. That might not be bad in the fish. So we're going to use this sherbet one. I have got, let's have a dig round in here. I have some orange soap dough. And we might just also add in a little bit of sunshine yellow and maybe just a little bit of red as well, just to give the fish that sort of real mottled look. So let's break some of this up. There's gonna be no rhyme or reason to how much I'm going to use, but considering I do want probably three fish and maybe one of the koi, or just a little bit of the koi actually, because we don't need much of that one. So we're gonna need a fair bit of soap dough. a little bit more of the orange in there just because I feel I need a little bit more that should do let's start mushing it all together until we get a nice mottled consistency of this one there you can still see we have got some very clear color distinction in there so we've not made a new color we've just made a really nice mottled effect what I'm going to do is just roll that into a bit of a sausage shape I will more than likely have to make some more of this up but that's about as much as my hands can handle right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the big boy extruder which I've had from off of I drink in soap I'm just going to take the end off now I just find it a bit easier right now just to pop that straight on the inside I've got my little koi fish we're going to use that one first I'm going to pop that one in the bottom and then I'm going to attach that to there and then we pull the handle and we're going to slowly start to extrude some koi fish and I don't need a lot of this one because I'm going to cut it into some smaller pieces um, just to lay on the top of my soap so we'll go uh, probably about there will make me enough. So once I'm at that point, I'm going to go grab a knife. Just going to cut that off. All right, so we've got our little fish piece cut off here. What I'm going to do is actually leave this sit here for about 10 minutes before I cut any more pieces. While it's still soft like this, the soap does have a tendency to pull and drag over the knife, um, distorting the actual shape. But if we leave this sit here for about 10 minutes, I'll be able to come back. And what I'm going to do is cut myself little slices, and these are actually going to sit on the top of the soap. But what I'll do while that one is drying off, we'll grab our extruder tool. I'm just going to take this bottom cap off because I no longer want that one. Let's take that out. I need my next adapter. 
So I've got my next adapter plate. I'm just going to pop in my little fish one. I'm going to pop that on the end. And then I'm going to extrude myself some longer pieces of this fish. And these are the ones that are going to go inside the soap. So I've just straightened the cane out a little bit. I'm going to leave this one sit. I need to mix up some more soap dough so I can make myself another couple more of these canes. I've finished extruding my fish shapes, but before we move on to doing the flowers, I'll just show you how I get these to the correct size for my mold. So I've got this one here that still needs cutting. What I tend to do is grab my mold here and my tape measure. Now, because I've got a long mold, I need a tape measure rather than the ruler. And what I'm gonna do is measure the inside of my mold. And we've got 47.5. Now what you can do is, if you don't do this very often, is to hold your measure at the end and then cut it with a knife. But because I do a lot of these sort of canes, what I have done, I'll move my mold. I come to the end of my bench, hold my measure on here, and I've actually made a little mark on the end of my bench here. So then all I do is I grab my embeds, lay it along my bench here. I grab myself my knife and where I've got my mark, I cut off what I don't need and then I have the perfect length in bed to go into the mold. Now I've got those done, let's make our flowers using our little cookie cutters. All right, so let's move on to making the flowers and we're gonna be using some of the fondant cutters. Now I seem to remember that this one doesn't work very well for the type of flower I wanna make today. So I'm gonna to stick to these two sizes. I'm gonna be using some Wedgwood, some lavender, and then for the centers, I have got some sunshine and I've got a very tiny amount of milk soap dough. I need to go and get myself a new um, block of that one. We will start off doing the Wedgwood ones. So what I'm gonna do is grab that piece off there that I've already started to mold and we're going to grab a little bit more because we want to make a fair few flowers so break off a nice chunk just going to give that a little bit of a mold just to start softening it up all right, now that I've got that softened up, we want to roll this out flat. And the best way to do that is to grab yourself some film, get yourself a nice piece here. And then we're going to pop that soap dough to the one side and fold the other edge over so it's sandwiched between our film and then we can use our rolling pin to roll it out. If you don't sandwich it between the film, soap dough does have a tendency to then stick to the workbench and onto your roller as well. So having that film just allows you to roll that out without getting all sticky. Every so often what I do like to do is just stop and then open up my film otherwise the soap dough kind of gets it um, caught up in all the sort of creases that happen when you're rolling it and it can actually split out of the film and stick to your bench so I like to every so often stop open up my film and put it back down again and keep going until I've got it's going to be about a couple of mil thick once I finish rolling it out all right, so you can see we've got that nicely rolled out. It's probably about one to two mil in thickness. What I'm gonna do is just flatten out my piece of film again. I'm gonna pop that back down and fold the other half over. And then we're gonna use our fondant cutters to cut them out. Now it's a really good idea to put it in between this film so that the soap doesn't get cut, stuck on the cutters. All I'm gonna do is just go around and push a couple of these flowers in. When I'm doing this, I'm making sure that there's a fair gap between my flowers here, because if you get them too close, what happens is the soap pushes together and then you end up distorting the shape of your flower. So we'll do a couple of these larger ones. Then I'm gonna come in with the slightly smaller cutter and I'm going to do exactly the same. I don't worry about using the plunger on these because I don't want any of that detail. Now I've cut those, I'm going to pull our film back and we're going to take our flowers out of here. So just gently lifting them up off the film. Now what I find best is I'm gonna grab a little bit of this milk soap dough, I don't need a lot. I'm just gonna make a little center for my flour. So I'm gonna roll it up into a ball. And what I find best is to grab one of the small ones first and pop the center in and then just slowly 
push the petals up around that center piece and then I'm going to grab one of my bigger petals here pop that small one into the middle of there push it down to make sure it sticks and then just gently push up the petals on that bigger one now I find doing it this way is best rather than layering up all your pieces and then you know taking these pushing them together and then trying to push the petals up because I tend to find that the petals stick together and they just end up looking like little squashed flowers so again I'm going to take a little bit more of that milk soap dough I'm going to roll it into a little ball grab one of my smaller ones Oop, into the middle now if you do find that your soap dough won't actually stick together um, nicely just a little bit of water will help to secure them together mine's actually just got just enough stick that I don't need to use that water I'm going to grab one of our bigger pieces pop that in the middle and again just push those little petals up and into place and there is another one so I'm going to finish doing that with the per with the blue and then I'm going to use the lavender and the yellow to create some more and then we will get on to making the soap now done up so we're ready to go and make the soap but first of all I need to prepare these little fishy embeds so I've just got myself a very sharp um, cutter here I'm gonna cut this end off it's a little bit squished so that piece is going to be no good to us so we'll take that piece off and then what I'm going to do is cut these probably a couple of mil thick and I'm going to make sure I've got one for each soap and I'm going to kind of tuck them in between all my little lilies just very gently push that off so we don't cut ourselves and there we have a little koi fish to go on the top of each of the soaps in between the flowers so I'm going to finish getting all these cut it cut up and then we will get on to making the soap we are ready to start making this soap and I've decided to split it up into a few smaller layers so that I'm not rushed to get it all into the pot and mess up the design. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on my sort of base layer and my plan is to do a base layer of some dirt in the bottom of our pond and I've got a bit of mica and some latte so we'll pour a bit off for those and then I am going to be piping in some leaves so into this pot I've got some tree leaf green and then I'm also going to put in a bit of green sage into this pot once we finish mixing up and then we'll pipe some leaves in once I've done that then we'll get on to doing the next part
So now we're ready to do the next part, which is going to be the water where we're going to put our little fishies into. I'm going to use my favorite technique I use for whenever I do a water-based soap. So I have got some colors here. I've got some aquamarine, some sea mist, some Egyptian blue, and some titanium dioxide dispersed in water. What I like to do is once we've got our oil and um, sodium hydroxide mixed together, I split them out for the colors and then I pour them back into my bucket alternatively before pouring it into the soap just gives a really beautiful watery look. I forgot to mention the fragrance oil I'm using is actually called Ocean Breeze and it's this beautiful mix of floral and fruity sweetness. It's got things like apple and orange along with violet, lavender and rosewood and I use it in a number of my different designs and it's always super popular. I did save a little bit of the green back so we can put some lily pads on the top of this one. But I think that is enough talking for now. Let's make the next part of this soap. Okay, this is looking absolutely gorgeous. So happy with it so far. What I'm gonna do is put my little fishies on first because I want my fish to be one per bar of soap. So I wanna make sure I do actually have them placed. And I want it to look like there are just, you can see the koi fish floating up to the top. So let's get all these on. And then I saved some of that green so we could um, pipe some little lily pad leaves and then I will stick all the flowers in. lily pad leaves here I'm using a Wilton leaf tip the one that's got the triangular bottom in it now normally when you use this leaf tip what you would do is you'd hold it so that the triangular bits are out the side and as you squeeze you would then pull to get your little leaf shape but because lily pads are generally round all I'm doing is I'm holding that still and letting it come out in a circle and then pulling it off so we get a slightly more rounded leaf it's not a perfect lily pad leaf but I really didn't want to mess around too much with the piping and I felt that I'd done enough soap dough decorations to go on this one so we would go for the piping which just gives it a little bit more interest as well. off we're going to give it a quick dusting with a little bit of biodegradable sparkle and then I'll bring you down for a closer look. So here is Lily Pond up close. I am so happy with this. It has come up so much better than I initially had planned in my head. When I first knew that I was going to be making the fish in bed for this soap, my immediate thought was going back to the soap that I made with my little duckies on and I did draw that plan out on a piece of paper. 
and that was all I was going to do. I had no idea what to do on the top of it. And then on my way into work this morning, that was when it suddenly struck me that I needed to make these little lilies to go on the top of the soap. And then just from there, it kind of grew where I added the little koi fish as well. And the colors are just absolutely perfect. I really love how the top of this one has come out, but I am going to leave it sit here and we'll be back in just a moment and we'll see what we've got on the inside as well. We are back to cut into Lily Pond and I am loving the top of this. Some of my green has got a little bit of soda ash on it, but that's okay. I'll get the steamer on it a bit later to get rid of that. But let's get this one all lined up on the cutter and see what we have got on the inside. I know I won't be cutting any of the little koi fish, but we may have a few little casualties on our lily flowers and leaves. We'll see um, what happens. Oh no, that's pretty good actually. It's only the leaves which have had a few little caps and all my flowers are perfectly intact. So let's take a look and see what we've got on the inside. I'll get rid of this end piece. Oh, and it's looking so good. Look at that. I absolutely love how that has come up. It's just the right balance of blues in there. Beautiful swirls as well. I love this pour technique. There is the next piece. I love how we've got those sort of wisps of the, um, the leaves coming up and by piping them so that they do go on the side rather than so that you would be piping down, you do get those sort of longer pieces there. And then there is the top. We've got the two little lily flowers and the little koi fish. I absolutely love how this has turned out. There is the next piece with the top. So I think it's just the right amount of topping on here. Didn't go too overboard with my piping like I can sometimes go. We've got a few more bits and I love how the ground is all sort of dipped from doing that spoon on it. Just gives it a little bit more sort of movement within the actual design there. So I absolutely love this soap. I know I say that about so many of my soaps, but there are soaps that I actually don't like as well. But no, I really do love how this one has come out. Love this dark blue, how it's there. It looks like there's shadows in the water. So I hope you have enjoyed coming along as I made Lily Pond, one of the Patreon soap design soaps. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a good one and I will see you then. Bye.